So good morning, everybody from London. Uh, this is Sunday, the 4th of September, 2022. Today, I'm going to go through this website, which is for entertainment purposes only. It is not financial or legal advice. It's gdpr2016.webs.com. At the time I did the website, um, this did apply in the UK, a GDPR Act. But since then, it's now called the Data Protection Act 2018. But they are more or less the same principles, but the sections under there will be different. So basically, that it's about the laws of contract that corporate structure has been enforcing contracts upon us without our signatures, our full knowledge and consent. So this um, law makes it mandatory for the corporate entity to disclose everything that they have on your name on their file. And they have 30 days to provide it to you with uh, free of charge, which you can ask for it to be on a, an email or on a CD and if you have a bank asking you to repay a mortgage loan, and if you give them 30 days to disclose the ledger of the loan that they allege was given by their account into your account, if they fail that in 30 days, then you can make an application to dismiss their claim. And if they don't disclose to you the fact that the actual money was generated from your own trust account and they secretly securitized your trust account funds to make lots more money, which you're entitled to have because you did not consent to it, uh, then the bank um, has to be held liable if they continue for the recovery of the securitized account but the bank will withdraw the case and then you have to counterclaim for the interest that you've paid and for the loan to be written off. So this is the actual 30 day notice and you can change the flags for your country here and you can change, find out what the, your your data subject access request law is in your country because in the UK it's data protection act for the EU it is GDPR act so in your own country you put the flag up there and the rest is the same and this they're called data controllers or they could be called something else they used to be called section uh, five one officers or something one five one officers in the uk they were the um director of finance of the corporation but now they're called data controllers so so the article 15 of gdpr you'll have to check what the equivalent of that is in your in your disclosure act in your country okay and what this is called a data subject access request that could be something else and if they don't comply within 30 days rather than saying a, a complaint shall be logged with the information commissioner's office you can actually say that an application will be made to dismiss your claim and further action legal action will be taken meaning well that's the the interest they've taken from you will be refunded and So this is really about why they're approaching you, why they're asking you for money and um, to disclose where your data has been sold. So when they securitized your funds, they, they've breached your data there and you did not consent to that. So this is all to do with third parties, fourth parties, fifth parties being sold your data to steal from you, from your assets. 
and it says non-compliance is a criminal offence. First, you went to that section, so you have to find that in your own country. You have to provide your name, date of birth, address, your country, postcode, and they will then write to you to say um, they want your passport, driving license. They they will don't know who you are. So I now just send them my passport uh, photocopy anyway to save time. Otherwise, it will take so long, long that, you know, if you have court cases, they just waste your time deliberately. And then you mentioned this Uniform Commercial Code 1308, which is without prejudice, which means that whatever you say at any time after you've signed for something, uh, you can change your mind and it's subject to change depending on your circumstances changing. Um, and then, so the GDPR is there. Section Article 15 is there, right of access by the data subject. And uh, this is the unauthorized processing of personal details, Regulation EU. So if you are not aware that your details are being sold or shared for other corporate entities to profit from you, then there's a breach of your this law. And um, I did have um, the Data Protection Act on here, but I will, by the time you see this, I will change it. I will add the Data Protection Act to that and I'll edit it. So I'll have one for uh, Europe, I'll have one for the UK. So this one is the text of it. So, okay, that's a photo of it. So these links don't work. This is the text of it so that you can edit it. And uh, yeah, so I'll have, I'll put the the Data Protection Act on this, but so, so say you can actually click on these articles, right of access by the data subject. So it's, it's a little project for you, uh, something you need to do. Uh, for entertainment purposes only uh, because these laws have been made a mockery of and if you really want to you know play this game you need to be aware of all the laws that protect our data and the fines this one if you go on there you'll see how many fines that there are 1.6 billion fines and if you go and click on these maps here, you'll be able to see how many fines have been given per country. So I want to filter UK and then it will tell me. And you can do it in order by fine or order by date. And say this is nine, I do it by fine. So nine, okay, do it the other way, sorry. So 746 million euros were fined to Amazon. Say Bank of, okay, that worked. Bank of Cyprus. Okay, Bank of Greece. They use dots instead of commas there, I think. Bank of Ireland, half a million pound recently. That's interesting. Um, right. Failure to implement sufficient measures to ensure information. So those are the articles. So everyone in Ireland should be able to look this up. Um, on the ICO, should be on the ICO commissioner's website, which is, no, it doesn't, doesn't work, but the search, there's something wrong with the search. And say if I put DVLA, 
because you know that doesn't that's just one phrase so there's 80 brooches now and these are all dvla and i will search it by say date newest first and we'll look at the latest ones now uh, public authorities under eir um anyway it's all fun isn't it just have a great fun enjoy this and you can you can go as deep as you want and use these cases or these you know findings of the ico against them and the decisions are there you'll see you can actually quote the decisions against whatever you know these people 16th of may 2022 uh, the complainant has requested owner information on five vehicles. And the DVLA refused to provide that. Well, that's turned around, hasn't it? Wow. And they've made a complaint to the ICO. That's just inverted, isn't it? Um, so I wonder, I'm not, I'm not going to go through that right now, but. Let's see if there's a recent, that's the most recent one. These are all inverted, by the way. The lawful basis for processing of vehicle keeper data by the DVLA, 13th of June, 2022. So this will be fine, won't it? Um, it's an opinion primarily for the DVLA, the Department for Transport. They're the data controllers for this processing. But the ICO, Information Commissioner's Office, is the regulator for the data controllers of those. So that's a bit of a conflict. Um, so they only mentioned the DPA, Data Protection Act. Uh, so they, the VLA is pretending that they don't know how they should behave. And they want the commissioner to explain to them how they should behave. Um, have a legal duty to rely on. So anyway, it's all going to be inverted. So you're going to, you know, feel a bit dizzy when you finished watching it. And they, you'd have to go. I usually just go to the bottom and see what they conclude. So in conclusion, are the DVLA required to inform vehicle keepers of their intention to disclose their information? to car park management companies to recover unpaid parking charges. No. So they're saying they can secretly give information about your number plates and your name and address to car park management companies. However, Schedule 4 uh, tells vehicle keepers that their information may be requested to recover unpaid charges may be requested it can be requested but that does not mean that it has to be provided so they it's one thing to request it but it's another thing to provide it okay that's it for now I don't want to bore you anymore that's not uh really serious uh serious work research is it it's it's light-hearted research what you find will be that at the moment the ICO is compromised, the ICO is profit led. They've come, the um, CEO is John Edwards. He's come from New Zealand and he was doing a lot of vehicle um, subcontracting, vehicle information breaches, subcontracting a big business. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.